डॉक्टर कांट आई जस्ट फिक्स माई बी पी नैचुरली वाई टैबलेट फॉर लाइफ आई यर दिस ऑलमोस्ट एवरी डे समाइम्स इवन बिफोर चेकिंग द ब्लड प्रेशर नाउ लेट्स बी ऑनेस्ट नो बडी वॉन्ट्स मेडिसिन दे आर लाइक टैक्सिस वी नो दे आर नेसेसरी बट वी स्टील विश वी कूड एस्केप दे नमस्ते आई एम डॉक्टर अमेय अमोणकर एंड वेलकम बैक टू एजी कार्डियोवाइज नाउ ओवर द इयर्स आई हेव मेट एवरी काइंड ऑफ बी पी पेशंट the google researchers who arrive with printouts of cinnamon cures blood pressure the health warriors who swear by green juices and the cautious ones who whisper doctor these tablets won't harm me right and i get it nobody wants lifelong tablets why not just fix it once and for all with natural remedies and lifestyle changes well that could be possible for some but not all so today let's clear the confusion once and for all when do you actually need bp medicines when can lifestyle alone be enough what really happens inside your body when you start tablets and yes when it's truly okay to say doctor can i reduce my meds because pills aren't punishment they are protection they don't make you weak they buy you decades of strength when used right and at the right time so let's dive in here's one of the biggest myths i hear doctor you prescribe tablets just because my bp hit 140 once no we don't hand out pills like diwali sweets one high reading after a stressful day or a bad traffic jam doesn't earn you lifelong medications what matters is your average blood pressure how your numbers behave over time now we consider medicines when your blood pressure stays above 140 by 90 mm of mercury despite lifestyle changes or if you already have risk factors like diabetes kidney issues or previous heart disease the goal of bp treatment isn't to make the machine show nice numbers it's to protect your arteries and prevent silent damage to your heart brain and kidneys years before it becomes obvious now think of bp tablets as insurance for your arteries you don't buy insurance because your house is burning you buy it so that it never does now here's the science that makes this non negotiable now studies show that for every 10 mm of mercury drop in systolic blood pressure that's like going from 150 to 140 your stroke risk falls by 27% and your heart disease risk falls by 20%. 20% you heard me right if a stock market mutual fund gave you that guarantee you would invest immediately. Yet when the same 20% protection comes from a 3 rupees tablet we suddenly turn into financial analysts. That's preventive cardiology in its simplest form. Not glamorous, not headline worthy, but quietly saving lives every single day. Okay, let's understand this very clearly. How do we doctors actually decide who really needs BP medicine and when? It's not a guessing game. There's a method to the madness. Let's break it into three simple stages like traffic signals for your arteries. So first is stage 1 that is borderline or mild hypertension. So your systolic is between 130 to 139 and diastolic 80 to 89 mm of mercury. Now this is your yellow light zone, not dangerous yet, but it's flashing slow down and rethink. Here we start with lifestyle. So cut salt, start walking, fix your sleep, manage stress. And the good news, about 60 to 70 percent of patients can bring their BP down naturally if they are consistent for three months. You don't need pills yet, just discipline. Second is stage two, that is moderate hypertension, where your systolic is between 140 to 159 and diastolic between 90 to 99 millimeters of mercury. Now we are moving into the amber zone. The risk is real. If after three months of genuine effort, not just I walk twice and forgot, your BP still stays high, or if you already have diabetes, kidney disease, or heart thickening, we add a tablet. Think this is like using an umbrella in heavy rain. You can't stand there and say, "Let me first meditate the rain away." By the time you do that, you're already drenched. A small tablet here can protect your heart from taking that beating every day. and finally stage 3 or severe hypertension uh, where your systolic is above 160 now this is the red zone don't wait your arteries have already been under high stress every day of delay is going to increase the risk of a heart attack stroke and kidney damage we start treatment right away and then continue working on lifestyle in parallel remember bp tablets aren't forever for everyone but early control is what gives you the power to reduce later So think of medicines as seat belts for your arteries. You still drive safely, follow signals and obey the rules. But if something goes wrong, those tiny tablets can save your life. All right, time to meet the real heroes of the BP world and trust me, they are not here to control you. They are here to control the chaos inside you. Now I'll try to make this very simple to understand. 
Now think of your blood pressure system like city traffic. Too many cars means too much blood volume. Over excited drivers is equivalent to your stress hormones and narrow lanes mean stiff arteries. BP medicines are the traffic police, signal lights and the road widening project all rolled into one. Now let's understand the common ones. First are the diuretics, the plumbers of the BP world. They flush extra salt and water from your body so there is less volume and less pressure. They are small but mighty, especially in Indians who retain more salt. You will often see medicines like hydrochlorothiazide or chlorothalidone here. Just remember to hydrate and don't panic if you need a few extra restroom visits. That's, that's the plan working. Second is your ACE inhibitors and ARBs. I call them the calmers. Now, these are the Zen masters. They block the hormone angiotensin 2 which normally tightens your arteries. So once blocked, the arteries relax, blood flows smoothly and pressure falls naturally. Common names? Enalapril, Ramipril, Telmisartan, Olmesartan, Lozartan. Side effects, sometimes a mild cough with ACE inhibitors. If that happens, we switch over to ARBs. An important fact, these medicines also protect your kidneys, so they are double agents for good. Third, calcium channel blockers. I call them the chillers. Now, these include silnidipin, nifedipin, benidipin. They block calcium entry into the muscle cells of your artery walls. And when muscles can't tense up, they simply relax. The result, wider arteries, smoother blood flow. Now, they are like the yoga instructors of cardiology. They don't rush, they just stretch the arteries out a little. A small number of people get mild ankle swelling. Now, that's because the vessels near the feet also relax a bit too much. So don't worry, the tablet is just doing its job. Your socks are a little jealous of that. Next is the beta blockers or the brakes. Now, if your heart's racing faster than a Mumbai local, beta blockers hit the brakes. They slow down the heart, reduce pumping force and let everything run cooler. Common ones, metoprolol, bisoprolol, carvedilol. Especially valuable if you have had a previous heart attack, heart failure, palpitations or just anxiety spikes. Just don't mix them with your 5 cup coffee habit. That's like pressing the accelerator and the brake together. Finally, others and combinations like the smart hybrids. Now, sometimes one hero isn't enough. Now, that's where combination therapy steps in, like amlodipine plus telmisartan or lozartan plus hydrochlorothiazide. Now, these combos attack pressure from different angles, so fluid, hormones, vessel stiffness, giving better results with fewer side effects. It's like the city traffic control finally hiring some extra constables and installing better signals at the same time. The chaos drops, the flow improves, and everyone reaches home safely. Now, this is one of the most common questions I get in the clinic. Doctor, why two BP medicines? Is my BP that bad? Relax, it's not about how bad your BP is, it's about how smartly we control it. You know that old saying, ek se bhale do? Turns out even science agrees. See, for decades, doctors used to keep increasing the dose of one medicine, hoping it will do everything. But research tells us that two smaller doses from different drug families, they often work better and cause fewer side effects than one large dose of a single medicine. It's like having both Kohli and Bumrah on your team. In science terms, each class of BP medicine tackles one different pathway. One relaxes the arteries, another reduces salt and water, and a third calms hormones or your heart rate. So when you combine them in smaller doses, your body gets teamwork instead of tyranny. The result, stable pressure, minimal side effects and often fewer tablets thanks to fixed dose combination pills. So next time you see two names on your strip, don't panic, it's not a punishment. This is where emotion kicks in. The moment I mention medicines, people look at me like I just suggested a life sentence. Doctor, once I start, I'll have to take them forever, right? Maybe yes, maybe no. The truth, it depends on your body, your numbers and your effort. So if your BP was just borderline and you actually committed, I mean really committed to walking daily, losing a few kilos, cutting salt, sleeping well, managing stress, then yes, sometimes the need for tablets can come down. But here's the catch. Most people start lifestyle changes with great enthusiasm, but lose steam faster than their middle order on a bouncy pitch. BP doesn't forgive inconsistency. It quietly climbs back. See, stopping medicine suddenly because you feel fine it's like quitting the cricket match mid-series because you are leading by 10 runs. The game isn't over yet. Think of medicines as scaffolding around a building. They don't build the house, your lifestyle does. 
but they hold the structure steady while you strengthen the foundation. Now, once the foundation, that is your diet, exercise, uh, stress control becomes rock solid, sometimes the scaffolding can come off under your doctor's guidance. And no, BP medicines don't weaken the heart or spoil the kidneys. In fact, they protect them. Now, we'll unpack that myth in our next video. Okay, let's bust some everyday BP tablet confusions, the kind you'll find in every family WhatsApp group. Question one, doctor, can I take my BP medicine only when it's high? No, this isn't paracetamol for fever. BP tablets don't work like fire extinguishers. They're more like your air conditioners. You keep them running at steady setting to maintain the climate. Second, when should I take it? See, for most medicines, once daily, in the morning, after breakfast, before the chaos of the day begins is the right time. The exact timing isn't as important as taking it at the same time every day. Third, can I eat bananas or drink coconut water? See, usually yes. In fact, potassium-rich foods help BP. But if you are on ACE inhibitors or ARBs like Telmisartan or Losartan and already eating a lot of banana, coconut water or dry fruits, check with your doctor. See, too much potassium can overcorrect the balance. Remember, moderation beats obsession. Fourth, doctor, can I stop my BP tablets now that my BP is normal? That is the most popular line in every clinic. But your BP is normal because the tablets are working. If your BP stays normal for 6 to 12 months and your doctor agrees, then we can consider tapering slowly but never abruptly. Question 5. Can I drink alcohol or skip a dose if I have a party? You see, one drink occasionally is fine if your BP is controlled. But dehydration plus the missed tablet and the stress is a recipe for next morning regret, not just a hangover. Always carry your uh, dose, your arteries don't take a weekends off, but avoid if you have already exceeded the limit. Sixth, I feel dizzy after taking my pill, so should I stop? See, first day dizziness can happen because your body is adjusting. It usually settles in a few days. You can try taking your pill at night if mornings make you lightheaded, but if persistent worsening and the readings are quite low, you may stop after speaking to your doctor. Question 7. Do BP tablets cause sexual problems? Rarely yes, and mostly older drugs did that. Newer ones like ARBs or calcium channel blockers, they are much safer. Some even improve performance by improving the blood flow. So if something feels off, speak up, we have alternatives. So do you really need BP medicines? Maybe yes, maybe no. But the truth, if you do, they are not your enemies, they are your safety net. Control BP early and you protect your heart, kidneys, brain and eyes for decades. Delay it and you pay the price later. So whether you are managing it through food, fitness or a pill, remember the goal is not to be medicine free. The goal is to be complication free. And speaking of complications, our next video tackles the million rupee question. Do BP medicines damage your kidneys? I promise you the truth will surprise you because the very pills people fear are often the ones silently protecting those kidneys every single day. Till then, move more, eat smart, sleep well, and please don't let misinformation raise your pressure more than your actual BP. Subscribe and share with your family WhatsApp group with real science this time. Goodbye and see you in the next one.